Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we're looking at Picarom. It's sort of gone away from the turbo style deck that we came to know at the beginning of the meta, where at the internationals there was lots of builds running heavy counts of uh, energy switch and even multi switch and stuff like Rayquaza and all that sort of stuff. It seems to have fallen more into the category of Thunder Buddies, where it's adding in some Jirachi, some Zapdos, some Jolteon, and some Pikachu and Zekrom, so that you have a lot of versatility to take on an all sort of wide array of matchups. That's the idea here. And uh, yeah, it's been doing a lot of uh, good results lately. Uh, Gustavo Wada's won, I think, two specials with it. I think Pablo Mazer's also won a special with it recently as well. So it's making top eights continuously and the build is becoming more and more similar towards this one now almost everyone moving away from the turbo build so it is more expected to see the likes of jirachi in the build now and still has like the let loose factor in there but it's gonna have the jirachi to fall back on at the very least so that you can go for early pressure with the likes of zapdos the likes of jolteon and then in matchups where you want to push the peaker on you can definitely go for that line as well so let's have a look at my builds and see the decisions within it first of all Couple of copies of Jirachi, Stellar Wish is still just a great ability for you, allowing you to look at the top five cards, find a trainer there and put it straight into your hand. This can help us grab early supporter cards to help consistency, as well as, you know, uh, all these situational cards, damage modifiers, stadiums to help reduce our energy count or uh, get more energies, as well as uh, just more ball search in the opening turns is always going to be solid. So this Jirachi is always a great pivot for us, has amazing synergy with Zapdos as we all know all too well, and we can just get get extra hand advantage from this card here and there, which is excellent for us. From there, I guess I'll continue with the sort of supporting Pokemon. Uh, we have one Let Loose Marshadow. Putting your opponent down to four cards is always going to be awkward. When we get to go first, slap an attachment on a Picarom, hit them with a Let Loose, we're going to put them in a really awkward situation. We can just snowball games sometimes because we've hit that early Let Loose. The opponent doesn't have an optimal turn. We can start rolling with our Pikachu and it's going to be insane. Similar story if we just, you know, attach to a Zapdos early. We can start pressuring early basics whilst combining Let Loose. Just like normal uh, Zapdos decks try and go for, but we're adding in this extra disruption turn one, which is pretty awkward for them. At the same time, this gives us an out against Mill decks trying to disrupt their uh, Lusamine and Stevens loops as well. We have a Lele. Wonder tagging is still going to be huge. Again, consistency, all that stuff. Try and find key support cards. We play... One of Erika, which is a nice one to dig out at times. Guzmaron key turns for a, a Tag Bolt turn, or even just knocking out big GX Pokemon. As well as, you know, we have five different supports in here, so we have some versatility for this Lele. Especially Lily on turn one is one we want to look for. On to all the Lightning stuff we have available to us. First of all, Coco Prism Star, Dance of the Ancients is such a big deal here. We can uh, simply put him from our bench into the Lost Zone and choose two of our bench Pokemon, attach a Lightning Energy card from the discard to each of them, if you do, discard all cards from this guy and slap him in the Lost Zone. Pretty simple stuff. Great Accelerator. Means we can get a Jolteon attacking for two energy out of nowhere. Could help push the Picarom out of nowhere. We have Energy Switch Synergy to make this even more of a threat. We can start attacking with Zero Aura and with Coco GX as well. So getting a bunch of energy into play is one of the reasons why this deck can just burst out plenty of attackers all at once. And it's mainly the reason why we're so toolboxy because we have the potential to just get any of these attackers for the right situation out at the right time. So this Coco is definitely a big one of Prism Star card in the deck. Similarly, Zero Aura is big for his ability, Thunderclap Zone. Each of your Pokemon that has any Lightning Energy attached to it has no Retreat cost. This is obviously a big deal. Uh, you can even do it on Jirachi alongside the likes of a Skateboard, so you can get around Absol. Um, but in general, this is going to help us push our... Zapdos in and out of the active without as many switching cards as pure Zapdos space builds play. It means we can move in and out of our uh, other attackers throughout the game as well. So we can keep uh, that sort of fluid ability to have all sorts of different attackers being threatened at once. Thanks to this fantastic ability from Zero Aura. It provides two other big parts to the deck as well. Plasma Fist can take knockouts on the likes of Lele's thanks to Choice Band. And we even have Electro Power to push even higher. So definitely an attack to bear in mind. Again, just because we have... Thunder Mountain, because we have uh, Coco Prism Start, it's always an attack to bear in mind. And Full Voltage GX is a great bailout option against Mill variants. Stall and Mill are prevalent right now. They really are archetypes to keep an eye on. And having this Full Voltage is a great way to reload energies onto our board after they've done a few Plumerias and Crushing Hammers. And it can really help us overwhelm the opponent. So definitely an attack to bear in mind. Really great recycle of energy for you just there. Next up, we're going to talk about Picarom. 
he is a powerful attacker, as we all know. Nothing snowballs the game like a Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX right now. 240 hit points on a basic is phenomenal. Full Blitz is amazing energy acceleration. For three lightning, you do 150. Search your deck for three lightning energy and attach them to one of your Pokemon, then shuffle your deck afterwards. Pretty insane stuff. You can go one Pikarom onto another if you feel like they're going to tank. Uh, you can just put them even on like another... Um, Zero Aura, that can be a nice target for them. Onto himself, of course, to get Tag Bolts rolling if you think he will take hits. And that Tag Bolt GX attack is something that you definitely try and work towards in the right matchups. Um, if you have three Lightning, you just do 200 flat. But if you have three additional Lightnings, you get to do a 170 snipe to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Punishing um, Tapu Lele GX heavily. Uh, from anyone and even just when you're taking like three prize turns even that's insane knocking out an active pokemon with the help of bands and electro powers very very easily and taking a knockout in the back is also a big deal so if this pikachu and zekrom tag team really can snowball the game quite nicely for you as mentioned especially if you're going for like early let loose the opponent's going to have a half-baked strategy and then you're taking out two threats at once it's going to be a real big swing for you really really great board control type uh, GX attack that also has huge tempo um, behind it as well. Tapu Koko GX has the Aero Trail so it can steal energy from all over your board and then take it all for himself so that he can use either Sky High Claws for reasonable like one shots on non GXs or again can be pushed with all these lightning buffs. We also have the Tapu Thunder GX attack to help out in mirror match situations. If your opponent does go crazy with their own full blitz, you can go for a big Tapu Koko and uh, Tapu Thunder through them if we really need to, which is something to bear in mind. And in general, this is something that can just sweep big knockouts if your opponent is attaching too many energy cards, so definitely something to bear in mind. From there, we have Zapdos, early pressure card, trying to take early knockouts. We want to get rid of the likes of Dittos and Grimers against Zoroark players because we are fairly reliant on this Jirachi, and we're also reliant on Thunderclap Zone as well. So early pressure, definitely going to be something that we want to go for here, and it's just a great thing to set the tone of the deck, set the pace pretty early, and, you know, from there we're just going to continue that prize race. So Zapdos, a nice non-GX threat that we can try and recycle as well. We are playing a Rescue Stretcher in this build, similar to Gustavo, he always plays one Stretcher in the last couple of builds he's played. So we can play a non-GX game if we, ha if we have to, at least for the early turns, we can, you know, set up two or three Zapdos over and over, and then late game drop a GX and hope that your opponent can't have many answers to him, so... I think that's the best policy to go for. The Sapdos provides great early pressure. When you're only playing Jirachi, it just makes sense really to have this guy. And we have such great synergy with all the lightning stuff. So pretty good stuff overall. Finally for the Pokemon, we have a 1-1 line of Jolteon GX. Jolteon in here. Oftentimes as a Zapdos counter type card. Because Electro Bullet is so efficient against them. Also having that Swift Run GX attack forces Zapdos players into awkward situations. Where they have to gust around this guy. Whilst also taking more one-hit KOs. At the same time, it's an answer to Varplume, which has become somewhat of a thing as mill variants have, again, popped up. So having an evolving Pokemon can get around Varplume at the very least. So that's kind of the initial reason why Jolteon was introduced into this deck. It does make it slightly more clunky, but the fact is the Jolteon is a strong card in its own right. So it's worth powering up in many situations, like I said, against Zapdos mirror matches as well. So yeah, all good overall. From there, we're going to have a Rescue Stretcher. As I said, it can help us be non-GX when we want to. It can help us recover the likes of Zero Aura, which is a really important one of in the deck. Recycle Jolteon if you think that's important. Um, so that's really something to bear in mind. We're going to have the regular switching cards to support this Jirachi engine. One Escape Rope can help us get around opposing Jolteons. A couple Switch and a couple Escape Boards. Then we're going to have two Energy Switch to synergize with Dance of the Ancients and try and power up sometimes Pikarom out of nowhere. Um, just retaining energy to make sure we have fluid attackers. It can also act as a pseudo switch card. If we have Zero Aura in play, we can attach to our Jirachi. If we already have a skateboard, we can get around the likes of Absol, as I mentioned, and then retreat and then e-switch out into a new active Pokemon. So this can, again, help with the early pressure of Zapdos in combination with Zero Aura. Uh, three Nest Balls help search out our guys alongside four Ultra Balls. Ultra Ball can obviously grab everything. Um, even the likes of Coco and Lele and Marshadow to prop their abilities. And at the same time has that synergy with the discard pile for our lightning energy so that we can dance on the Ancients them back into play. Uh, from there, for Electro Power for those damage buffs because we are an aggressive archetype. We have a couple stadiums. I'm going for the Viridian Forest that I saw uh, Pablo playing recently. I like it. It can just thin your hand size to improve your Lily draws. You can make sure you have a low enough hand size to use your Erica. 
and finding constant energy attachments is always something we like to go for. Having searchable energy via Stellar Wish is always strong. Thunder Mountain, reducing your cost is obviously highly valuable and means we can burst some of these attackers out on the cheap. Uh, it means we can get Headbolt and Swift Run GX out of nowhere. If we just bench an Eevee that turn, we can Stadium attach and get rolling with it as well. So there's a lot of surprise factor and burst potential with this deck, which is really difficult to play around for your opponent because there's the potential for all these things to come down all at once. Onto the supporter cards. Uh, I do like one Erica. It helps you just build into a big hand here and there. I don't really like being too reliant on it. I just want to have one copy um, and not too much else. Then we're going to have more stable draw from the likes of two Cynthia. Two Volkner can pick out some key pieces when we need them. As well as the four copies of Guzma to help us, you know, zap those pressure things down. Deal with early Dittos and Grimers. As well as just take key GX knockouts. And the four Lily just for some stable draw as well. Obviously big in the early game. And we're trying to be an early pressure deck. So the four Lily is a big deal. For the tools, just a couple choice band to again help us push on GXs. We don't want to miss out on tempo. Two escape boards synergizes with the Jirachis very well, obviously. And we have 11 lightning to round out the deck. So yeah, pretty straightforward, simple build of the list. Uh, there's a few different cards you could consider going in as well. Obviously, there's so many um, Picaron decks floating around right now. I think there's um, some stadium cards you could debate. Something like an Aether Paradise conservation area. There's um, Absol as a Pokemon that I've seen in a number of lists to try and help against opposing Jirachi players and slow down Malamar players as well. Um, and from there, there's not too much else. Oh, other than healing cards, if you want to go down having one Max Potion or one Acerola, you can consider those as well. Oh, and Weakness Policy. That's a tool you could think about. So there's lots of different variations of Thunder Buddies right now. Normally, only like two or three cards differ from some of the top performing lists. Um, but that's the list that I'm happy with. It's a fairly straightforward baseline to show off the deck today. I will give a small, like, um, disclaimer this is one of the decks that I find most difficult to play right now in Standard. It is a very flexible, very versatile deck. And you have those turns where you can just go all in at times and you can push tempo in different moments. And figuring out when to do that in certain matchups is something that's very difficult to learn. It's quite a different deck to other aggressive builds out there. Like Zapdos is much more straightforward. Bacephalon is much more straightforward. This deck has so much versatility and so many options for attackers, it becomes very difficult to identify the best choices at the right times. Knowing what to play around for your opponent's hand size, knowing what they're capable of is oftentimes how we're going to try and adapt this uh, deck as we go. But at the same time, there's those awkward moments where you just happen to start a peeker on, you happen to start a Zapdos, and then your, your plans have to like adapt here and there. So um, it is like flexible and fluid, but... Um, Sometimes you're pigeonholed into certain lines of play um, just based on like what you start sometimes. So it's a pretty awkward deck to learn. I think it's one that actually does take time, which is why you see some of the top players in the game do very well with this deck. Uh, even though it may not be one of the most popular ones of like the top three or four decks in the format right now. This hand, however, is atrocious. So <laughs> this is not going to be a good start for us. <laughs> Jeez, okay. We want our opponent to start a Ditto so we can Electro Power knock it out. That's pretty much the only hope we have right now. Ah. Other than a good top deck. <clears throat> That's a funny looking Ditto. At least they put down a Viridian Forest so we can start thinning these cards out of our hand, but... Our lifespan isn't going to be very long here. Our opponent doesn't have a good start either, though. They just have that buzz wall and play a Cynthia. Obviously being a fighting deck. Oh, it looks like they're um, Zapdos Lycanroc, maybe. Or Zapdos Buzz B-String. Something like that. Obviously having a fighting element means that we don't really want to have Picaroms in play. We can just go Lightning for Lightning and hit him for 10. Because we somehow drew into an extra dead draw card. Very good. Good start for the deck. <sighs> See, I'm personally a man who loves 
the Zap, the pure Zapdos builds. <laughs> Picarom, I've not really got on well with too much, so I don't think I play it the best in the world. I'll try and do my best today, but it seems to have more of this factor than all the Zapdos builds I play, simply because it only plays two Jirachi and not four. Uh, <clears throat> so we're experiencing what I normally experience with this deck, which in one way makes me very happy, in one way makes me very sad. We may have just died to a Coco GX here. There we go. Very good stuff. Wait, what? Well, we're not dead. And we picked up a Jirachi. Our opponent made a big error there. We can still wish and get out of this mess in three, two, one. Poggers. We can do something. Because we play energy switches, I actually will commit an attachment here. I think I'm also committing an electro power. It could even help us push for a Jolteon knockout later down the line. Speaking of which, am I going to retreat and switch? I do want to get more Stellar Wishes off. Um, but swinging with Zapdos is still fine, I think, here. <clears throat> I think we'll hold switch for now. Just swinging for 110. Next turn we can try and dig for supporters and electro power. Our opponent has a Cynthia. They have guaranteed knockout on us with the Viridian Forest already, so... That's not going to be a problem for them, but they have put a GX down against us, and that's going to be good news. Means we can uptrade on them. They're just going to go for Sky High Claws. One awkward thing is if we take this two prizes with the Jolteon, we will uh, open up a Sledgehammer, and he already has the Lycanroc, so he could like Lycanroc Guzma. Which is a small worry. We've gone through three lightnings already, so I don't think I want to get rid of this energy with Forest. I might just get rid of Coco GX with Forest. Trying to improve our Stellar Wish, basically. Volkner gets us just Nest Ball, which is fine. Yeah, seems fine to me. Do we have our other Zapdos? We do. Okay, good. Our Jolteon is actually prized. Okay, good to know. So how do I finish off this next turn? We have to deal with the, uh, the Buzzwall next turn. It might be Zero Aura taking a knockout, something like that. We could always take the prize of a uh, of a Jolteon there. Okay, we get to take two prizes. No Jolty on there. Guzma isn't too helpful. More energy cards in our hand. We've seen a big surplus of those. Obviously, we need to play a high amount so that we have enough to go for those like full blitz type plays. But it does feel a little clunky in comparison to pure Zapdos, which is normally like 10 and less energies. Our opponent's going to sack off an escape board for an energy here. They're not going to attach, they're just going to Lily. Interesting. They have the Electro Power. They still have Stellar Wish. There's a Nest Ball. This might help them get more Jirachis out. I'm sure they're worried about having only one Jirachi in play. <clears throat> they could also go for something like Absol to slow us down. Looks like they're just going for another Zapdos, though. It's 
good for us if we can get a ball search card or a stretcher to try and knock out this Jirachi. This is only one in play. Drawn to a lily. How many energy now? Four, five, six, seven, eight. How am I going to bin one? How many cards in our hand? Play, 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 play. Yeah, I think we don't take an energy here. That's just Stella Wish. Energy switch is nice. It means we can guarantee a knockout with our Zero Aura. If we get nothing better from this next Stella Wish. Uh, Ultra Ball can get us Coco, which I don't really need because we can E Switch attach Mountain. I could Ultra Ball away, Guzma, Energy, just to lower our hand size for a Lily. Okay. So our own GX coming down is a little bit awkward. But we are going to go for it here. All these could go for a let loose, but I don't think it's correct. I think I'm just going to establish this. Just going to switch. Four, six. Is there anything else I need to do this turn? Not really. We can just go for Plasma Fists. Take another energy off prizes. When our opponents already use their own Coco, we're much less worried about uh, Lycanroc coming in from nowhere. Boswell is no longer on Sledgehammer turn. So it's looking pretty promising for us. Our opponent's already played down one choice band, one uh, two electro powers. So this 190 might be tanky enough. That looks to be the case. We get to pick up a Guzma as well. We're going to stretch a back Zapdos here. Probably just knock his out with ours. Do I want to knock out a Jirachi instead? I think yes. I think we're just going to attach and do the little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle here. And we'll put under assault. We're feeling pretty far ahead now. Even though there's a damaged GX, he could uh, take a knockout with this Boswell, go down to two, but we're holding, you know, we've got double Jirachi, we have this, we have a lot of good options. They're going to attach to the buzz, they're gonna play a switch into another Jirachi, Stella Wish. They find an Ultra Ball, which isn't a Guzma. They might use a Lycanroc, though. <clears throat> There's a Guzma. Let me see the Sledgehammer. So we can burst out a... Full Blitz here. If 
if we really want to. Alternative, if we just find another Electro Power, we basically can't lose. So let's try and go for that. I think we can lower our hand size enough for an Erica here. I can always rope as well. I think we will rope this turn. Ah. Well, we're still committed to the rope. Do I want to lower this hand size? Let's draw four. And we'll just swing. There's our Jolteon. Just in time. Third energy on their buzz. Choice band onto the rock rough, they can Stellar Wish. Feels like simply because the Zero Aura tanked one hit and we were able to take the first two prize knockout, we've been ahead for the majority of the game. They can Ultra Ball now. Grab themselves a like an rock. They need to combine this with a let loose if they're going to do anything. They choose not to bloodthirsty eyes just so that they can Guzma their own Jirachi out of the way. But this gives us game with Guzma on this. Or Evolve Electro Power, whichever way we want to do it. Just go for Guzma. Pretty routine win. We basically played like a Zapdos deck. As said, when you play two Zapdos in the stretcher, you can basically play a Zapdos <laughs> when you need to. And in that matchup, we needed to. It's one of those things where if we had started a Pika on, you just slap your head and say, whoops. <laughs> I'm naturally a Zapdos player, so I play Picarom as if it's Zapdos that sometimes puts down a big chunky Pokemon. But that's the thing, we had the burst potential. We had the potential to burst out Picarom that turn if we really had to, for some big knockouts. So, you know, having the potential of burst that this deck has is pretty, pretty exciting to play. Pretty, you know, one of the big reasons why it sees so much success is that it can have that flexibility. We have a nice start here, Jirachi and Zap. Forest can get rid of an energy as well. If our Stellar Wish fails us, we can get a Lele. Or a Let Loose, if we want to be spicy. Let's see what we're up against. We see another Rockruff, more fighting stuff. Boo. Boo fighting. Turn one, judge. Wowzers. That just happened. We got a lily, and they just concede. Okay. Turn one, judge, though. What a dream. Let's have another game. <laughs> Didn't really get to see what that was, but yeah. Starting with Jirachi is always nice. 
It feels like most Picaroms are going towards two Jirachi. Some decks do play three copies, though. Fitting in that third Jirachi, I do see a lot of value in. Even though you normally only have like one or two on the board maximum, there's value to having the third. Basically, if you don't want to play the stretcher, you can play the third. I like stretcher, though. Seems good. Adds to the whole flexibility thing that we're on about. Let's just go more down one direction than the other when we need to. We can recycle Jolteon. We can recycle those Zapdos. Stuff like that helps. We have a Mull to kick things off. More lightning stuff. Looks like there's just so much yellow on the ladder right now. Turns out Electro Power is a good card. Who knew? Ah. See, when you start your three prize Pokemon, all those intricate plans go out the window because you just started Pikaron. So this game, we're going to try and go Pikaron based. <laughs> we have no choice in the matter. Let's get it. Looks like we're against a... Pikarom as well. We can just attach in Cynthia. They have a slightly stronger start. For now. We can... Whoops. Nest Ball. We can actually mirror his start now. Which we definitely will do. Prized one of our Zapdos. We've prized a Jirachi. Prized Eevee. That's a lot of bad prizes. Prized an electric power. Okay. We'll retreat out of this guy. Still a wish. Stretcher is our only choice. So we'll take it. It's not the worst choice, to be fair. We'll just pass. No need to commit the escape board, because they could easily just put down a Zapdos and knock us out. We have got to go first here, and we've got to turn one attachment, and in Picaron mirrors sometimes, that can be huge. Having said that though, the opponent is quite easily capable of overtaking us with attachments. They play Wishful Buttons, which is very scary, because we of course do not play uh, Blower. Um, and that means that his energies aren't going to go anywhere, so he could always have threatening attackers. It might indicate that they're not playing Zapdos, though. Our opponent just Stellar Wish and passes, which is really good for us. We're going to put this down. I'm also just going to put this down. Uh, we could hit... What better supporter? It's only really the two Cynthias we could hit that would be better. Or like Volkner. It's only a draw two. Yeah, okay. Draw three, I mean. No energy. I feel like we might be letting loose here. Feel like we're letting loose. This is happening. I think Rope, Picarom are the discards here. We still have that stretcher. Let loose into energy Zapdos is the absolute dream. That's a whiff. Close though. Whiffing all sorts of energy is very bad news for us. We're holding Guzma. I think just because of potential of other let loose, we'll just put this down and pass. Some slow turns from both of us so far. Let's see how the let loose treats them. They still have a stellar wish to fall back on, of course. Maybe it forces like Lele or something onto their board, which is something we always like to see.
They grab a switch at the very least. They may switch into Picaron just because it's a free retreater for them right now. And they could like play a Cynthia or Lily afterwards. More batons, sure. That is good for us though, because it means our Coco GX is always going to be live, basically. We are going to play that switch into the Pika Rom. And yeah, exactly. It's a Lily after the fact. We could get energy, Thunder Mountain. Whenever you play a mirror, though, you are scared of putting Thunder Mountain down. It's going to pass. You do hit energy now. We have energy Guzma available, so I'm going to just go for a Stellar Wish to kick things off. Hmm. This could be Ultra Ball for Dance of the Ancients to try and get a knockout, but it's asking for so much. I think we just take the Cynthia and just go for the Guzma play. Kind of baiting a full blitz out. When he has Baton, I'm not too worried that his Picaron will knock out ours, at least with a full blitz. I would only expect it to get knocked out by a Tag Bolt, especially when their Jirachi is knocked out. Speaking of which, we take one from our own prizes. I wonder if he'll attach loads of energies with his full blitz as well. Opens up a crazy Coco turn for us. He's just going to retreat straight into Jirachi. And Stellar Wish. Grabs Lucia. That can be Stadium Coco. That tells me he's probably not the Zapdos build. He's probably just a pure Picaron with batons up the wazoo. Let's see what our opponent wants to do here. I'm gonna see a Guzma. I'm gonna knock out a Marshadow. Oh, he's just gonna try and trap Marshadow. Okay. I feel like Electro Power Cynthia is good here. Lelo for Guzma doesn't make sense because he could quite easily. Thing. And we want to keep bench space open for Dance of the Ancients anyway. I think Electro Power Cynthia works. We could try and get like Attach E Switch Stadium, something like that. Or Dance of the Ancients isn't really live just yet, but it could be an option. I don't mind throwing one of these into the pot. We hit double Electro Power. Uh, we want to try and find E-Switch now. Yeah. We do whiff, but we do pick up an Erica, which I'll gladly take back. Now, putting some prior damage on this isn't a bad thing at all. Could have been an insane turn where we full blitz knocked him out. Instead, it's kind of more passive. Do I want to get his attachment in? I think it's correct. Man, it's such a tiptoe kind of matchup. <laughs> so scary at times. You know, he has the seer for burst.
So if he wants to full blitz, he we know he can. He's going to start off by retreating into Jirachi. Find himself a Guzma. This could be scary. How many Electra Powers are coming down? <laughs> 180. Or 230 if he wants to, uh, to tag bolt. That's actually just insane. That can't be correct, right? I mean, I could just attach and just kill this. I think that sounds like a good idea. Kill this, power up Zero Aura to knock out his Zero Aura. Currently sat with game in hand. Feels like he just hasn't done what his deck wants to try and do. Baton build is pretty creative, but pretty weak in Lightning Mirror matches just because of Coco GX anyway, so. Feels like this deck has enough energy <laughs> recovery with Full Blitz and this. Feels like the Baton might be a little overkill. But who am I to judge? You could potentially get like a four prize turn with like a, a uh, Jolteon play, knocking out maybe like Zapdos and Pika Rom at the same time. Something like that. But we really do look pretty far ahead right now. We need to get let loose into a pretty bad hand to not have game somewhere within this hand. Remember, we have Coco GX waiting in the wings if he wants to put any more energies onto this board. So things are looking pretty chill. There is a Zapdos. Wow, they actually still do play the Zapdos. Interesting. Interesting indeed. You can see a Lily for five. And basically the difference between this mirror was that we were able to do Zapdos pressure. We hit the Pika on for 110 and we knocked out a Jirachi. That means now we can close the game out on a Zero Aura pretty comfortably. Sure, they can take three prizes, but we've already uh, found our way into game. There it is. The Thunderous Assault, so he can take three. But we're already holding the goods. Nice, nice win. Let's have one more game with the deck. So far we've beaten a Zapdos Lycanroc and a Mirror of sorts. Let's see if we can take on anything else. We also had a Rockruff concede to us, which will count as a win. <laughs>
we win the coin flip. So we'll kick things off here. We've been pretty good at starting Jirachi. We've done it a couple times now. Shuckle. We're up against a stall deck of sorts. We have Coco, we have Zero Aura. Zapdos as well is important. Uh, we've actually prized our Eevee. Prizing Eevee is a big yikes if he's plume based. We're going to go ahead and grab a Pika Rom though. We're going to bin off this jank. We get Zero Aura developed on board. We know our Let Loose is in deck as well, which is important for sure. I'm just going to Cynthia. Kuzma's not a bad option. I could start putting pressure on stuff with uh, Zapdos if he wants to put down any Oddish or anything like that. I'll take the Ultra Ball just to make our Lilies stronger, though. Erica feels really weak in a matchup like this, so we'll just hold this stuff for now. The Ultra Ball definitely could be for a Let Loose early as well if their hand uh, is pretty weak. But they have Nest Ball Steven, so their hand is anything but weak. So we definitely want to save our Electro Powers for the Hooper with Zapdos. Try and one shot them when we can. And probably save the Stellar Wish for. Oh, sorry, save the Let Loose for when we like have to two shot it. Something along those lines. Get rid of this stuff. Grab our guy. Attach, draw five. Keep the Ultra Ball for Let Loose availability. Stellar Wish sounds good. Hitting him for 150 doesn't sound correct. I think we shall just take the, uh, the escape board here and hold it. They're unlikely to do much outside of like maybe Crushing Hammer and Stevens. Oh, they're actually going to go for Mars, not our stadium. Oh, they hit our Let Loose? No. <laughs> That's insane. I'm amazed that they went for Mars after a Steven, though. That's really bizarre. So we can go Energy Power if we want to... Take a full bits knockout, which I think we definitely do want to do. Ah, this means we can save our... Oh, I should have gone... Uh, I actually should have gone Choice Man initially. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's better than the thing we just chose to get out of our deck. Whoops. So, we could full bits onto this, and this guy can start knocking out Hoopers. I think it's pretty good. I think it sounds like a plan. They played a Mars after Stevensing on one. Insane. They nest ball out a Reggie. And they just Stevens. Okay. Feels like things are going well.
So we have the opportunity to Guzma knock out Reggie if we want to. Or I can just retreat in Coco Prison. The biggest thing I'm concerned about right now is them Stevensing the Lugia combo. I don't I really don't want Coco to get Lost Zoned, because it's essentially Lost Zoning like five energy cards instead of three, because we can't dance back two more energy later down the line. Not that we're basically I mean I guess we're never really gonna discard this anyway now that it's got three energies on. And I guess a Lugia coming onto the board is just game winning for us, so I guess this is just happening. Like imagine if we combine this turn with a let loose, like how do we lose? But yeah, they masked they masked the marsh I know. We still feel pretty comfortable right now. Counter catch a Gladian probably isn't going to cut it. They can guarantee more bench Pokemon so they don't lose next turn at least. But things are not looking too good for them. There's the Oddish. There's the double Oddish. Pog. Well, at least we got Eevee at this point. Um, I'm just thinking how greedy it is to GX this turn. <laughs> Feels pretty greedy, right? Hmm. If I let loose and it goes wrong, I don't have space to put down Eevee unless I dance the Ancients myself. So I think we're just doing this. They could well get a uh, plume out at this point, but doesn't make them safe. This is why we play the Jolty on these days. And yeah, they're just Stevens. I was going to say, it's game if we find an energy card. And we just did. Okay. Oh no, it's not game because I uh, had to use a stadium for the energy card. Whoops. So I guess just taking a knockout is pretty good. They could still go for a Lugia GX play on this, but then we just win. Yeah, okay. Good talk. That turn we could have gone for like Mountain, Switch, Cynthia, Hope to hit one of our four energy left, but we're in such a commanding lead. We don't have to do any of that stuff. Candy Plume comes out. We took a power from prizes. And we're demonstrating why Jolteon's part of the deck now. They get a bounce stadium. Buff padding, not going to work on Varplume. Looks like they're just playing cards to Tate and Liza. They have buff padding for the Reggie, I guess. Yeah. Uh. 
And this is why we're pretty good against stall decks. <laughs> we have just so many answers to stall, it's unreal. Yeah, that's Thunder Buddies. Um, impressive. I don't think I played flawlessly. I think there was a couple things I could have done differently. But overall, we won our games. Deck seems powerful. We have some good stopping power. Beating Mill is always satisfying. And uh, yeah, very flexible deck. So if you get your head around it, this can definitely be a very powerful archetype. As we know, one of the top tier ones for sure. Lots of results to support that. And having this wide array of attackers is always nice. I think we prized part of our Jolty Online every single game, <laughs> which kind of hurts. But we eventually got there. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about uh, Thunder Buddies and Picarom and how would you try and build this deck. Do you still think the turbo build has potential or do you think it's more or less always going to be a similar build to what you've just seen today? Let me hear it all down below. I'd love to get involved in the discussion. Back tomorrow with another video. So I'll see you then. Cheers.